2017 meeting of the Scarborough Town Council, and I'll call the meeting to order, and everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilor Baybine? Present. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Katarina? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Chiazzo? Here. Chairman Donovan? Here. Order 1833, act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I MRSA 4056E in, cons in, co in consultations with legal counsel regarding a legal matter pertaining to pending litigation related to State v. State of Maine v. Michael A. Doyle, docket CR 176679. And I would ask for a motion to go into executive so session. Second. Uh, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. We are in executive session. Be back at six o'clock for the workshop.
Well, neither way, he's not doing anything at the current. All right, we're ready to get started. All right, we're back in session. Uh, uh, and I'm going to turn this over to the town manager to introduce uh, the next workshop. Yes, thank you. Um, as many of you may recall, uh, we did put together a long-range facility plan that's still a bit in production, if you will. The town side is uh, pieces done. The school uh, is kind of adding some pieces to it. We want to make sure we dovetail all of those needs together. Uh, beyond that, we've also had some requests from outside parties, namely the uh, uh, a group that was interested in building an ice rink and was interested in locating that possibly on the campus. And that really caused, uh, I think, uh, a revelation that uh, space is precious on campus and we ought to be very mindful and wise how we use it and let's not commit a parcel to one use uh, at the expense of another potentially. And so to that end uh, the council was kind enough to help provide some funding to do what we're calling a master campus plan which takes into consideration the town and school needs and perhaps perhaps some private needs as well It looks at what the available development opportunities are on campus and looks at the range of options it sounds like a simple process, uh, but what we found was uh, there's just a lot of different permutations of how that might play out. So tonight we have Angela Blanchett, who really was a project lead for, uh, from the town's perspective, and our <coughs> consultant to present some of the preliminary results. So let's start. Thank you. Um, thank you for giving us the time tonight to, to talk about um, this campus plan, because um, as you can see, it's a lot of innovation, and as mentioned, there's a lot of options. So what we're hoping tonight is, is really this is a living document, even once we finalize it, but really to get tonight maybe some feedback, feedback, initial feedback. I know most of you um, are seeing this for the first time. Um, but also looking at it as taking it home and digesting this and providing additional comments and feedback as you kind of go through this. Because um, we're going to walk through um, piece by piece and um, hopefully um, have a better understanding of where we where we started from. And I guess to give a little bit of background before I hand it over to Amy is um, we really started with that long range facility plan that the planning department had done. Um, it, that was the catalyst to start this off and, and that um, plan was really about looking at the short term, mid term, long term facility needs for the municipal side. Um, while at the same time, on a parallel path, the school is looking at their own facility needs. So as Tom said, it's, it's looking at how do we merge those together mm -hmm. and, um, and really looking at as, as one priority elevates, it moves around and there's, there's factors that can affect others in a domino effect. And you'll see that tonight with each of these options, it really is how the priorities fall and where things shuffle around. So um, I'm going to have um, Amy Siegel is our, our um, consultant from Terry Dewan's office that has helped us over the past year we've been looking at this. Um, he's, and her and her team have been meeting with staff and some committees and we've walked the campus and, and really been out here counting cars and, and really, um, really getting to know this campus itself. And so I'm going to let her um, walk through all this slide. Thank you. It's nice to be here tonight, even though it's quite nice outside. Um, what you're looking at, what was passed out just before we start, is uh, summary pages. So those are the last two pages of the document. So there's 34 pages before that to kind of <laughs> inform that. So it's a lot of information to kind of take in, and certainly it's, uh, you know, as Angela said, this is definitely a living document. We're very much looking for feedback. Um, and you know, there's, there's lots of options and lots of permutations of options, and we're trying to distill it down. And um, you know, it's it's definitely a complicated little uh, nugget there. So <laughs> I just don't want you to look at that and say, you know, have have all sorts of questions, which you should have. But as we go through the process, hopefully, it'll start to kind of filter out, and you'll understand sort of where where we're at with those different things. Okay, so with the show that's on the screens, um, there's two copies of the full show on the table, so they can be referenced, and I know Angela has the show, and it'll be provided to you directly, so you'll be able to see it here for the first time, ask some questions, and then ponder it more on your own time. Okay, so 
As you know, the campus is about 160 acres. Uh, it's outlined here in red. It includes the high school, Wentworth School, middle school, the town hall, the library, uh, a whole assortment of recreational open space, um, developed active play areas, as well as Memorial Park, and will be the home of the public safety building in the near future. Uh, we looked at this study. We did two parts. So phase one was really sort of um, assisting in the location of the public safety building and how the, its connection and uh, adjacent to the Memorial Park and some other uh, senior recreational activities uh, that were planned, the bocce ball courts. So that was the first uh, phase. The second phase is taking stepping back again and looking at the whole picture. We just noted, I'd included in the show the, the latest plan from Sebago Technics and Context Design for the Public Safety Building and the, the new road through there. Um, we can refer back to this as needed, but um, I just sort of put that in there as progress. And then referring back to the facility uh, master plan that was done in November of 2017, these are the facility needs that were outlined and um, approximate square footages for those facilities. This is where we started with, or st this is the starting point, so um, certainly things can uh, flex a little bit, but just so you understand where we, we were beginning with. Um, the public safety building, as I just showed you, has kind of had a lot more uh, review and understanding, so I'll move on to the public library expansion. These plans uh, for, oops, okay, well, I'll start here for a second. Um, so the, the plans for the public library, uh, those were done in 2006. It wasn't approved. It was 10,000 square feet on um, one floor on either side of the existing building. And uh, as we, we had Nancy Kral, um consulting with us to kind of give us an update as to what the needs would be and if this still was a good number, and obviously um, that's, that was good, and so we got a lot of good feedback from her on parking and other um, uses there. The community center and the facilities plan was noted um, to be kind of reference what South Portland has, which is a, I think it's between 35 and 37,000 square feet. Um, here we looked at something that was more like 25,000 square feet, which would have a portion of it would be two stories, but the footprint itself would be 25,000 25, square feet. Um, I have some references from other towns that I can you know, look at for parking and things like that. Uh, the ice rink, as Tom mentioned, it, it would be more of a private endeavor on public property. Um, we looked at a few different facilities in Falmouth and, um, <clears throat> what was the other one, Falmouth, Freeport, just kind of getting a general sense of that 25,000 square feet. So in footprint size, the community center and the ice rink will be basically the same on the plan. And you'll see different iterations with a CC for community center and an IR for ice rink. So they're kind of interchangeable uh, blocks out there, sort of conceptual blocks. And then the maintenance building and storage. So that facility, um, I should back up here, is you know smack dab in the middle there, and it was that facility was there prior to the Wentworth School, and um, obviously after the Wentworth School was developed, and you have new parking loops and <coughs> new vehicular patterns through there, it's uh, you know community services are noticing more and more conflicts with pedestrians and students moving moving through there and going to different uh, recreational activities. Um, you've got bus loops and all sorts of things. So Todd um, has expressed, you know, the need to revisit where that would be located and also the ability to expand there and have more storage and have it be buffered and not have it be sort of front and center in the middle of the campus. <clears throat> and then last is the consolidated pre-K to three school. So we, when we first started the process, we didn't necessarily have that um, on the facility needs, but as the as the project progressed, we included that. Um, we looked at the most recent work that was done by Harriman last November, and we've done two things. It's one to kind of look at the campus um, with the rest of these facility needs and then look at it again with the school and see how that influences it. Um, these sketches are really just to give you a concept of scale. Um, and as we go through, you can kind of uh, give us feedback on uh, sort of placement and things like that. But just wanted to know that it's, it's, it's a very big item, that pre-K-3 school, in comparison to the other structures. So and that's reflected on the plans. All right. 
So now I'm going to go through a, a bit of analysis. Um, if, if it gets too detailed or not detailed enough, just let me know, raise your hand, and I'm happy to answer questions. So while working with the team, Jay and Jamal and Angela and Dan initially, um, was to make sure that we were aware of sort of how circulation works within the park or within the whole parcel, um, the pedestrian circulation as we've noted here in blue, and then making sure we're very aware of how this campus connects or should connect with all the, um, the community and neighbors around there. So there's pedestrian or there's uh, neighbors, direct neighbors to the West, oh wait, I should also tell everyone, north is to the, the uh, right of the drawing. We flipped it so it would fit on the page better. <laughs> so um, to the west, you have all those neighborhoods off of a Sawyer Road and the DOT land and the Millbrook reforestation area and sort of all of that to the west. To the north, we have Sawyer. To the east, we have um, Gorham Road and the whole Oak Hill commercial area, uh, Hannaford Drive, um, all those mixed use areas there and then to the south you have the main veterans home and all the you know additional commercial areas of on the, the south side so you know Jay wanted really wanted to make sure that we paid attention to connections so we did sort of drive around and walk on each one of those streets and really look at where folks are walking now and where we want to encourage those connections so um, you'll see some of these pink lines to the east or to the north I'm sorry um, towards Sawyer are um, potential connections to to, you know, those might be vehicular connections or might be pedestrian connections, but we just sort of note those um, on there for consideration. Also, um, to the east uh, towards Green Needle or Meadow Woods Lane, there was some discussion about needing emergency access from the middle school out there versus having to go through all, all the way through campus if something was to block that access point. This diagram uh, talks a little bit about bus circulation. So we were out there on three different occasions watching the buses come in and out at the different schools and noting where those congestion points are. It's not, you know, this, I'm not uh, telling you anything you don't already know. Um, but, you know, it informs the location of these other buildings. So it's just good to be mindful of the sort of the loop into the high school and the loop in the middle school and sort of went in the school. So there's lots of... Uh, sort of direct paths to kind of loop around through here and you have those stars showing those highly congested points at this point at this time okay now we're going to talk a little bit about natural systems mm -hmm. so in the dark bluish purple are the wetlands on the site um, of the 160 some odd uh, acres there's about 25 acres of wetlands on the property about 16 percent of the site and uh, from fairly extensive stormwater management system. Those are the areas, the stormwater systems are highlighted in blue. These are areas of detention, retention. Um, you've got the pond at Memorial Pond, or in Memorial Park, so lots of uh, existing facilities to, to consider. We've also noted sort of the field, uh, the geothermal field uh, south of Wentworth, kind of dashed in the, right in the middle there. So these are all facilities that we need to be mindful of because of um, the need for them, obviously and um, you know the cost of moving that and reconnecting all of those systems. So, so there's wetlands and stormwater. And we've also noted um, vernal pools on here. Those are the pink dots that have those big buffers around them. Mm -hmm. So there's one towards the south, um, sort of back behind the town hall, and that bigger wetland system, and then one on the north end closer to Sawyer. Uh, each one of those has a 250-foot setback um, uh, regulated by DEP, and then a 750-foot setback regulated by Army Corps. So it's not to say that you can't have development um, in these buffers, but uh, certainly there are now, uh, certainly with the southern one, but um, just being mindful of, of where those are and um, the additional permitting restrictions and limitations that may um, be a result of those. Okay. And one of the main uh, sort of tenets of the study was to make sure we were looking at the open space uses and um, dis discussing with community services where they were at now, what, what their needs would be, and if what could be accommodated on the campus. Um, I know from talking to Todd, things like, um, you know, wanting to make sure the middle school baseball teams could, could be here and have the regulation-sized fields. 
Um, he talked about tennis courts, and if we had one more or two more, they could host uh, tournament play um, in a better way. Um, we talked a bit about um, so the skating pond and how much use it gets and sort of maintenance versus use and how many days. And so, you know, Todd has a very open mind, which was great because he could kind of go pros and cons on all these different things. Um, obviously, field, field space is precious in every town and especially here. So but really we're looking and being aware of all those things. Um, so that's kind of all noted in here in these different color coded areas. One of the things Todd mentioned, as I was just saying, was sort of reversing things like, this was like a short term thing. If you could flip the softball and baseball fields and you could have um, the middle school could be playing there in a regulation size. So we've just noted that in the study. Okay, so with all that analysis, from natural systems to sort of existing uses, uh, we, we began to develop what we're calling this land use overlay. And we've, what we've decided to do is to look at the campus and find areas that it's sort of in, in three different tiers. The first tier is these areas noted in yellow, and they are what we're calling seemingly undeveloped or underutilized lands that if developed might result in minimal disturbance and displacement. So, you know, it has to do with the cost of relocating things, it has to do with permitting, um, stormwater, all those different factors. So these seemed like the lowest hanging fruit areas. So you have everything from the water tower lot to the south of the high school to some wooded areas around the middle school and then out by Gorham Road where the tennis courts are and Wentworth Drive, which seem to be underutilized. Um, so starting there. Then you have uh, this next tier in orange, which are areas that are more developed. Um, they might have ball fields on them. There might be parking in there, um, sports uses, uh, and obviously any modifications to these areas may cause more disturbance and displacement and um, impact sort of programming in a bigger way. But we, you know, try not to rule anything out, trying to keep, you know, a big picture idea of things. And then obviously this next layer is this sort of red area. And these would be considered more cherished or more costly to replace or disturb. So obviously you have Memorial Park being a very cherished space and you have the track and field uh, area, which would be very costly to uh, displace. And then the areas to the north, um, where you have sort of the lace, you know, an internet, interconnected sort of network of wetlands and the vernal pool and the stream and the setbacks from the stream and setbacks from the vernal pool. <coughs> so that area in the north would, would necessitate more more permitting um, and you're kind of at your limit with uh, wetland impacts so you know any additional wetland impact would um, trigger compensation and you're all aware of, <laughs> sort of the, the costs associated with compensation um, so you know, this is kind of where we're at now we're certainly open to comments um, but uh, just sort of keeping in mind this is sort of where we're at oh and just to know around Wentworth School that areas there are um, we felt like those were not readily available because of the geothermal wells and the stormwater and sort of potential expansion needs immediately adjacent to the building. So, so this is our three tiered land use overlays. You can see percentage wise, um, there's about 6% of the land is in that yellow, 17 is in orange, 21 is in red. And then I also noted, already noted the wetlands are about 16% of the land. Before we move off that, can we just yes. check in quick? Um, so this area here, the, the field, the turf Traffic area, field, yep. and then this area, these are kind of costly for different reasons for development right. yeah. and difficult. This we'd characterize as kind of cherished. This is Memorial Park. It's kind of a green field. It right. really would be easy to develop, but we wanted to really say, no, we want to preserve that uh, for its own use and purpose. Right, and you can right judgment on our part. Oh, okay. okay. Right, and just to note with Memorial Park, you know, we put the sort of the open field area is red, you know, as in cherished, not going to be readily available. But it's adjacent to that field there that's in orange. So we decided to separate those two out, um, just to show that there might be more ability to develop on that parcel if, if need be. If we've got that wrong, should that all be red? For instance, should we? Right. That green space entirely? 
I guess the way I look at this, and I've, I've had the privilege of participating in some of the early stages of this, I see this more as a more of a tool than a than a template or a, or a firm plan. So when we as as things arise, we take this tool out and we look at the map and we say, okay, let's talk about you know square footage needs, where it can go, where where it fits, traffic flow is much easier. It's kind of already already <coughs> pre-developed. So I'm comfortable leaving it orange right now because I think it's 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 all it's everything here is just a possibility. It's looking at the probability and possibility of where we're going to put something. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, just, just for perspective, because I was on the council when the park was approved, and, you know, the intent of the community at that time, and I do recognize that communities change over time, was that that area was to be passive recreation. Mm -hmm. um, so while I agree that this is only maybe um, just a, a tool, um, I think the intent should stay the same. I wouldn't want to see a building on there. Um, so, you know... I always said I wanted to see a memorial statue there, but um, that's another argument. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So is there any other questions going back towards any of that analysis that you'd want to revisit? Sure. So it's, I'm just kind of curious. There, there's so there's sections of that map that aren't covered by color. And are, are you just saying that those are completely off limit? There's no, ch there's no chance of reusing, like, directly east of Wentworth, for instance. There's a fairly... You know, there's there's some space there. Right. So. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we did kind of decide that if it was areas, you know, where there's circulation roads, there's parking that's used 100% of the time, bus loops, um, so in general parking that we knew was sort of needed, we we removed those from the scenario. But you're very right. I mean, we. I guess I should go back here just to look at this. Um, I didn't really talk about this, and I apologize. Um, I talked about the circulation, but one of the things I skimmed over here was the blue areas, which are the parking areas. So we, on three different occasions, we went out here and looked at how many, how much of the parking lot was being used, and the red or the pink number on the top is the, you know, plus or minus the number of spaces, and then the <coughs> percentage below it was the amount that was being used. So we went during the school days, um, and then sort of right you know, after as we were watching the bus loop. So, for instance, the parking lot um, to the sort of southeast of Wentworth School, uh, you know, has about 250 spaces, and about 40% of it was being used. The furthest sort of southeastern corner was always vacant. Now, I understand that it was designed to accommodate more parking, you know, for overflow from whether it was a, an event at uh, the track or football game or you know, from the library or what have you. So I, I understand that it was built for that. But these are just our, our observations. Um, interestingly, around the high school, um, we looked at, uh, I'm sorry, I gotta make sure. These are observed vacancies, just so you understand that. So like that lot that I just spoke of, like 60% of it was occupied, 40% was open. So if you look around the high school, um, like the main lot that's 250 spaces, 90% of that was, was utilized. And then the spaces directly to the south, those were about half full. So that was during the school day. Um, so those, those are the ones that are closest towards Route 1. So we thought that was interesting <laughs> as we were looking at. That makes, say, a lot. that makes a lot more sense. I was like, <laughs> tennis courts were 90%. Yeah, no, yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I spoke. Yeah, so that Wentworth Drive, <laughs> every time we were there, there was, you know, one or two cars. So, um, you know, and I. You know, I've, I've actually I've kind of driven through on the weekends, too, just to see where people park. So, um, But these, these general numbers give you a sense of the total number and the percent of vacancies. We noted around the public safety building, those were just sort of the general numbers, you know, if through that fa phase one kind of numbers. And then in parentheses was kind of the additional parking that would be created there or potential to be created there. Sorry. Is everyone, am I clear on that? Cause mm -hmm. I <laughs> so I think one of the things that's important to think about here is... Um, this doesn't take into account, let's say, if we if we decide at the 248, I mean, what if we build a two or three level garage and free up a lot more space somewhere else? And it's always an option. So I think this is just existing lots. I, I found interesting the fact that um, I think the different lots get different usages at different times. Yeah. So, for example, Wentworth, if there's a football game or a baseball game there, that's full. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more of event parking, I suppose, than, than actual normal organization. Right. Doesn't mean it can't be shifted somewhere else. It just means that that's, you know, that I, I think that's an assessment of all the existing lots that we have right now. Right. 
Is that fair? Yeah. <laughs> I've been here for some soccer play tournament. <coughs> you know, it's it's sort of it's kind of flips all of these where you have right. more parking in them. So, okay. So I'm gonna go back through to where we were at here. So to answer your question, Councillor, about the areas we kind of excluded specifically were, um, you know, if you look at the, the parking lots by the high school, that main one, we, we thought only maybe half of that would be possible to put something on. And if you look to the lots directly to the south, that water tower lot and the two lots on either side, we included those because we noticed that they were about 50% occupied. So there may be a possibility of having more demand on those parking if you had in this building there. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going back to this facilities need list on the left and then just to, to sort of introduce these concepts. And again, there's many permutations and um, certainly we can provide more if, if, if we're not hitting something. But um, basically we're looking at all of these needs um, and trying to balance them on the, on the land and um, sort of starting out knowing that the public safety building in yellow towards Route 1 is sort of a given. And then the, pop, the public library, we took those plans from 2006 and then just put them on here. Um, we didn't look to see if, it, Nancy seemed to imply that they didn't need more than 10,000 square feet. So that's what we just took that layout and put it on there. Um, she did note um, parking needs, especially when they have bigger events. Mm -hmm. So and shared parking <coughs> and things like that. But <clears throat> so you'll see those as constants through all of the options that we go forward with. What's the library now? Square footage? Hmm. Looks like we're more than doubling it. I think it's about doubling. <coughs> doubling. Hmm, I don't actually have the existing square footage, but No, you're about right. I think it's like five or yeah. six thousand square feet. Yeah, I mean, some of the notes that we have on here is that the original, sorry, the original plan was um, also included some office space for SEDCO, and that may not necessarily be needed now, but, um, you know, there was only a couple, couple spaces. But do you have a square footage? I don't have that here in front of me. Okay. Sorry. All right. Check those plans again. And it was constructed in 1989. The parking lot was expanded in 2006. <coughs> I think you can estimate well at that. It's a 10,000 square foot expansion. Yeah. It's about 10,000, maybe a little less than 10,000. Yeah, it looks Existing. like it's a little bit it's, less than it, that. It's I would like say just eight. under. Yeah. 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 Okay. So then the first grouping here are we're showing five different locations for a community center and or an ice rink. So if you were to have both of these things on the campus, you'd need two of these in any one of these scenarios. So we looked at these five locations and I'll go through them briefly to kind of give you some pros and cons. <coughs> the first location is, uh, they're out towards Route 1 there and that's utilizing a parking lot that was, had some vacancies in it and we felt that the parking there could be displaced towards um, the parking lot that's closer to Gorham Road there that was also sort of 50% um, utilized. We know that the lot that's closer to Gorham Road to the corner has uh, more accessible spaces and those are used for folks who need those because that's an accessible entrance on that end of the high school. Uh, we showed parking in between, you know, let's see. So you have these red buildings and then you'll see these P's and these blue areas kind of showing that you have to have parking to balance any one of these, um, these buildings. So, so number one and number two are sort of similar in that they're utilizing those under, underutilized parking areas. Number two location um, closer to Gorham Road is interesting because the topography there uh, it may be well suited for that community center if you want to have a two-story section that's facing Gorham Road, but then it tapers to a one-story section as you're kind of going back um, westerly into the lot. So it has topography working for it if, if it was uh, determined that, that would be a good place for it. Uh, when we were looking at this and looking at the access road there on the south of the high school, we were also looking at the egress out, the old egress out to Gorham Road. And noting that you need to have some traffic analysis done and it may be worth considering opening that road back up at least for an exit or an entrance you know even a right turn only into Gore in from Gorham Road we understand there'd be conflicts with sort of bus and turning traffic but any any you know one or two uh, 
those sites for one and two would necessitate looking at traffic and it would kind of congest that corner. But again, as you mentioned, there may be um, an opportunity for doing some structured parking in there too. Site three is right at the end of sort of the terminus of Municipal Drive. Um, that has great sort of, it's right in the kind of, feels like it's in the heart of the campus there. It's close to Memorial Park. If that was to be a community center, it would have a lot of benefits um, with bathrooms and sort of, you know, uh, proximity would be great. Um, it is, at, <coughs> as we noted, a pretty congested corner right there um, with buses and everybody coming right through <coughs> the front of that. So it probably has more challenges than benefits, but it is uh, space-wise, could accommodate it. Site four is on the skating pond area. Again, this is sort of thinking that maybe <coughs> the skating pond wasn't the highest and best use for that land um, for the limited amount of time that it gets used. And you know, we put that building and had it face municipal drive there and um, with some parking <coughs> behind it. This, you know, any of these buildings, of course, would need to be sharing parking with the schools around them on the off times. Site five, which is uh, off of right there on the corner of Wentworth, the old Wentworth Drive there and Gorham Road, that would have great <coughs> frontage on Gorham Road, especially for community center. Um, you would be able to reconfigure Wentworth <coughs> Drive, that old sort of road there, the parking lots, the, the large Wentworth parking lot, and sort of use that unused capacity in that lot um, probably more on a regular basis. And you have uh, more area there with the tennis courts and the, you know, there's just kind of a lot of um, inefficiencies with the circulation in there that could be cleaned up that would allow for some um, good parking availability in there. Obviously it would displace the tennis courts, so we'd need to find a place to put those. <laughs> okay, any questions with that before I move on? Amy, I'm just mindful of time. We have yep, 25 okay. minutes, so I minutes. want to make sure okay. we're I'm gonna move through hitting these. the high points. Okay. All right. Uh, maintenance building. So we talked about this in the beginning about the need to expand um, and push back and be a little bit further away from pedestrian vehicular areas. So number one is uh, back towards the west side of middle the middle school where the um, old aftercare used to be. Now it's a storage area. Uh, number two is the sixth grade building. So if that was accommodated in another school, that could that general area could be used for that. Number three is kind of using an area that's undeveloped right now. It's probably the most restricted because of the wetlands and lack of storage and parking in there. Um, we want to be able to continue to buffer it, but and I know that in looking at all three of those locations, Todd's like, I don't really want to be tucked in that corner. It's a little too far away from other things. So we also looked at um, four, which would displace that practice field. Um, but it would allow for expansion and um, a lot of, uh, we would tuck it back in there and it wouldn't be as visible. Okay, so now we're gonna go through these options and these are the options that are on the summaries that you have. So again, we're looking at places where the, the community center and the ice rink could go, a maintenance building, the library, and you'll see some different sports fields, sort of accommodations through there. Can so you can I just ask, yep. um, just go back one slide. One more or that, okay, yep. No, you can go back one more if you wanted to. Why do we need so much parking with maintenance? It may be more than is needed. It's sort of parking, it's storage okay. for materials. Um, okay. You know, we, we could, it's Big sort area. of, you can see all those areas are a little bit different in size. We kind of just, you know, maybe the one by number four, you could have, you could split that in half and you could put some tennis courts in there or, you know, Thank there's different you. things you can put in there. Yep. But you would be displacing a practice field. Okay, so that's option one. Oh, and just to note where there's like gray areas, there was, those are suggestions on um, new roads, and we noted the new road by the public safety building as well. Okay, so in option two, we are putting that maintenance building back in that, that western side. We've just, instead of the skating rink, we have a practice field. We've tweaked the tennis courts up a bit and putting the a community center, for instance, down off of Gorham Road. And we have, we're showing an ice rink off for the end of uh, Municipal Drive or one or the other. But you can see that it's definitely tight in here working in that and starting to balance out the parking. Does that tennis include the expanded courts? That, that top, well, it, it does in that there's four now and we're showing five. Okay. That's not, you need But that's quite eight. Yeah, like the okay. scheme shows eight. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's just another scenario showing these buildings at different levels. Um, again, if you put anything in that corner clo close to Route 1 and Gorham Road, you're going to need to really look at some deck parking. But in that location, because of the, the changes in elevation, you actually can mm. do it fairly easily. Another option, option three, option four. Um, you know, again, it's just sort of moving things around and looking at different scenarios. And there's five. So again, it's just permutation. So it kind of gives you a sense of where these things could all go in relationship to each other. And the next series of images, um, we take that pre-K to three school and put it on here. And you can see that in, in relationship. And again, this is a sort of scale idea. So this first diagram is right from Harriman's um, November 16, 2017 presentation they did to the school board. You can see these two blue areas to the south. Those are some early, early studies that they did. They weren't meant to be designs, just conceptually square footages, so where they could go. This shows a connection out to Sawyer. Can, um, can those yeah. go there with the vernal pool? I there? know, really. Um, I mean, I would say it'd be very challenging to permit it there. So, but I, that's why we kind of layered these in because when we were looking at that, it was like, hmm, that may not be the ideal location if you really consider it. You can relocate it. those vernal pools, though, can't you? <laughs> well, you can compensate. Well, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah if there's. If you move it, you don't have a location to pay. Right. Well, you're not really no. moving it. No, you're okay. you're sort of compensating for it. Otherwise, it's just it's right. more of a challenge to permit through that. And Angela can kind of get into those details. So what we did was okay. We got this 171,000 square foot building. Let's just look at these <coughs> blobs. And these are meant to be blobs, not the building designs. Um, you can see there's three different ideas for that that's a southern end, or northern end and each one of them obviously you've got the vernal pool and you've got the setback from the stream and you've got wetland impacts and you've got to squeeze in more parking and you're going to you're going to require um, access out to Sawyer at that point because you have too many uh, vehicles kind of all coming through there so for safety reasons so any one of those sites the one two and three are going to be challenging for those reasons um, there's obviously more land that way but permitting and um, sort of facility connections would be tricky. Uh, looking at four, once there's like three, four different scenarios kind of along Gorham Road, we just sort of looked at different blocks and thought, okay, well, if you displaced softball fields or the wetlands or you know, all those areas. And then the five is the skating pond in that uh, recreation field, which would necessitate, you see that P5 next to it. So the five is the building, the P5 is the parking kind of associated with that. And we were looking at somewhere like 100 parking spaces for these. And then number six, you can see, is in that, that field adjacent to Memorial Park. But again, they're odd shapes, but it's just to give you a sense of scale. <clears throat> All right, so going back to these options. So these, you can see now, it's the same thing, but it has that pre-K school up in the, the, the southern area. So that's scheme one. I'll go through these fairly quickly. Scheme two, scheme three. Scheme four, and then there's some iterations for four, as you can see. I put these in here. I mean, some of, you know, when I look at these, and for instance, in this one, version three, I've decided to combine the community center with that, which is, you know, exciting for a lot of great reasons, but also would certainly stress the uh, parking, and we really need to be thinking about structured parking at that point, and we're filling in that wetland there, which is likely to be a lower value wetland um, because of its, you know, kind of sandwiched in all those areas and it doesn't have the vernal pools and the streams. But so there's wetland impacts with that, but it's also kind of <coughs> getting to that point where you're like parking, you know, <laughs> it's always that nemesis. So back to uh, the counselor's comment about structured parking, it certainly would need to be considered. Again, this is four and two. That's five. So those summary diagrams are what you have uh, in front of you and with some bulleted sort of impact changes in those. That's what those are there. So that's, that's summary. <laughs> I can go back and answer any specific questions just so you have a place to start digesting. So I have to ask the question. So we got an ice rink in there, but no pool. Yeah. In, the, in the community center. Oh, it's going to be in the community center? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Presumably. I mean, that, the okay. South Portland yeah. footprint. I want to make sure. Has, has I think that's going to be one of the first comments that we hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's presumption. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the ice rink is a, is a decent one to bring up. I mean, it's there. I don't think we'd be 
even talking about it, but for the fact that a group you know, was seriously looking at it, and I think that need continues to be there. So is that something we should continue to concern ourselves with and reserve space for, potentially? I think it, well, if we can, if we can be using it, um, as I said originally, with the original ice rink for other uses also, and also, uh, I know ice time is at a premium, so sure. you can rent out to other schools too. I guess I wouldn't be afraid of, of public-private partnerships as long True. as the space right. provides, and I think this is more of a space utilization tool. Right, so it's I, largely going to be first come, first serve. You know, the first project's likely to, you know have its choices, if you will. Uh, the school is the most challenging piece, of course. It's the it's biggest single crazy. footprint and uh, <laughs> is challenging to fit anywhere on this site, it, it seems. Did anyone have any thoughts on the uh, location of the pre-K through three? I do. I, I, I definitely don't want it up in the wetlands or rural pool area at all. I mean, I've thought that since since day one, and I commented to Chris that I know there's a state law, I think it's state law, that you can't have certain grades above the first level, which is crazy, because it, it's very expensive to build these types of schools, because they just take up so much land space, so I'd like to see something done about the state laws and rules about that. But. I should bring up, we did, we did meet with um, the superintendent and went through just what you were right. saying. She that was one of the first things she brought up was right. um, I think first graders you can be a half level up, but in, uh, there's different ridiculous. levels that you so need you to be have a real sprawling school. effect. Yeah, exactly. And it costs more to build those. Yeah, it costs way more if a building sprawled. Than, well, yeah. and I think the goal of it with this though is again that's still a couple years off. No, I know, but I'm just saying. So I think it's it's good to have a concept in our head of what what placement will do to the municipal campus in terms of traffic flow and parking requirements and things like that. I mean, I guess maybe we cross that bridge when we get to it. Of, you know, I mean, because you're right, you're trying to fit in uh, uh, various places you'd put things with how do you personally prioritize? Right. Like Because Tom's right, sometimes what comes first just bubbles up to the surface, sort of gets first dibs. and. In some respects, the library has been working at it for a long time. And so, but the library is probably the least difficult of all the structures that we're talking about right. because it would be a, an expansion off the existing space, which uh, isn't characterized as useful for any other purpose on this. And the other, other thing is Scarborough Downs. I mean, we do have Scarborough Downs, and there's yeah. been some mention of, well, can we put community center or whatever? in that location, as opposed Which, to on the mass here, on this campus. Right. So. Yeah, this isn't to, to suggest that all these facilities need to be on the campus, but I think some of them, in my mind, make a lot of sense to be here, but there are other options that can be considered. Uh, this is really the exercise that let's understand what our opportunities are and be thoughtful mm -hmm. uh, when making choices. I think that, um, going back to what Chris said, this is a tool to at least conceptualize what the land can be used for. Right. Not necessarily buying in today that it has to be used for that, because I still need to get over the consolidation of the pre-K and moving it out of the neighborhood, the neighborhood schools. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a very, very long conversation. I should say I'm yeah. not sure if that's a final decision. And right. I, I think they're a yeah. consultant, and there's a reference that uh, for efficiencies and scalability and all those sorts of things, it makes a lot of sense. And I think that's why we're just trying to observe that that's an option, let's make sure we're right. yeah. considering it. Peter? Although I think to kind of build on Council Gary is, if we don't think the school should go in that corner with all the wetlands, because one, for those reasons too, it's probably going to be very, very costly. Yeah. If we think we need to have a block of land, the only other, there's, there weren't that many other places it could go. So mm -hmm. at yeah. some point, if we got an indication of that's what we're going to do, mm -hmm. we should think about that block of land and making sure right. the school gets first dibs that that's because right. that's the biggest building that's going to be the right. most expensive building if we right. can avoid wetland mitigation costs and yep. all those other things that would be in our best interest that's the point. because it really looks like one and two are uh, are really impaired sure. by oh, yeah. wetlands conditions yes. mm -hmm. I don't know about three so much uh, four is four is really the tennis court area am I right 
yeah, it's yeah. Tennessee yeah, Wentworth, Wentworth Drive. Yep. Well, I think that's right. Which, right. which were characterized as low grade. Well, true. Because I think it almost is man made. But also, I think on three, we've had so many issues with green green needle and water drainage. And yes, other exactly. Yeah. I think we need to think about all that corn because it's all wetlands. Right. Has serious issues. Mm -hmm. and, and we've heard a lot about green needle and yeah. what happened with the library. Oh, yeah. But and also the congestion. I mean, for any of us that have had to come and go from the middle school, unless we can get access, and I think there's issues related to vehicular access on the Sawyer, neighborhoods need to be involved and consulted. Unless you get alternative access, you're just exasperating the, the, the problem. But, but I think, to, I mean, also, I mean, let's say the maintenance building is the first thing that moves because they grow out of space. Uh, that's a fairly small structure. We could, look at the, we could look at this plan and say, okay, well, we're not going to push it up against... You know, to your point, Peter, we've got to have a, a fairly flexible big block of land, so that might restrict us putting it in another area or something. But it's just a tool. You plug it in and you say, okay, you know, let's, let's run it. The, 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 the cutouts are there already. We could run a bunch of different scenarios on the screen and say, this is what it would look like here, this is what it would look like there. Yeah, and just to be clear, the maintenance building, it's not so much that we're out of space, although I think Todd would kick me if you know what I was saying. That's, <laughs> you'd love it, but it's really recognition now. It's right in the heart of the campus, yeah. and it's a, it's a working building. And you know, with Wentworth right next door, it's not ideal location anymore. And so, that's really, in my mind, probably the driving force to recognizing. My point is that could come before a school comes. Possibly. Good. But and I think Tom's right that you know finding a more obscure spot for it uh, would be uh, you know less less value, less visibility. I mean, when I look at number six, I think. Gee, that that's sort of the center uh, of the right. park. The park, mm -hmm. and and that I went by it again yesterday, and going out to Sawyer Road, and it's so terrific that 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 would be pretty sacred spot space to use up. Uh, I I personally, if I had to make a decision tonight, I'd be voting for five. The location of that. It's like four and five are best. Uh, I like four. I, I, my concern with all of those is uh, anywhere in the again north, uh, and um, you take away the all the sports fields from your from middle school, and then it looked like a lot of your other um, designs didn't leave a lot of space for like a, a playground, which is going to be critical for K through three or pre pre K through three. Well, remember, too, that those blocks aren't necessarily what the building footprints don't look like either. So that might be utilized space, and you could trade off some parking for that, you know, play, <coughs> play space or something. I think it's just yeah. kind of a... My point is just that we're really filling right. it. Right, yeah. Right. Well, that was that's what spurred the whole discussion on the sure. first place. Sounds like four and five draw the most interest for... For a potential school. Yeah. But if. If. Well, that's helpful. That's an if. There. Make that right. a big if. Well, it's a big if, <laughs> right? I, and I think the school board will grapple with that long and hard before a decision is made uh, whether to consolidate pre-K through second grade. Other comments, Katie? Anything? No, I just said. Peter, great. Great. So, where do we go from here? To, um, I mean, unlike most plans, uh, it takes some time to understand these and to work with them. It's not as if the uninitiated can pick it up and really kind of understand it. I really view this as kind of an internal working document, not to say that it's a public document, people can see it, but right. it serves an internal purpose first and foremost. Uh, I don't see the value in kind of surrounding with it, lots of narrative and kind of describing each map. No. I think as, as long as it's clear to the general public that this isn't a plan, like this right. is what we're going to do, because this, I think if people see right. that and go, oh my God, you're going to put the school here, I don't want, or they're going right. to put this building here, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. As long as we're very, very clear, even if we just put concept or, right. or something to really describe that this is just a tool, it's not yeah. the plan. And it says concept only, are we going to emphasize it? I mean, it clearly, it, clearly is, it offers so many options. And, and variations that it is a tool, right. uh, and uh, the priorities will uh, of actual buildings that we need to move forward with will probably dictate the selection process and where that where it shows up. At least this 
gives us a mechanism for kind of judging what are we using up. Is that what value do we attribute to it? So I think probably on that basis, that's where we, we get to today. I just want to say to staff and to long range planning, I mean, we've been talking about this master plan for years and have not had one, even an illustration. So I just want to say this is kudos. It's, it's really nice to finally see you know, what that full build out is, you know, yeah. guarantee it's concept, but um, I really appreciate the effort that was done on this. I think we'd be remiss not to recognize our forefathers and mothers, whomever, that had the foresight of assembling these parcels. Uh, right. and I was talking with Rocky Rosbearer, and he said his dad was involved and instrumental, right. and it, without that vision, uh, we wouldn't even have this opportunity to talk, frankly. But are there no alternative discussions at the library? I notice all of them have the same library footprint. I think from a cost perspective, Nancy wants to stay where she is and utilize the space she has. But I mean, if you were trying to solve another problem, right. unless uh, you want to build her a brand new one, yeah. 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 thousand square feet, I think right. she, she right. might be open to that. I mean, I think that's part of the answer is if you wanted to do something with that facility Come because on. you needed uh, uh, a municipal this, that, or the other thing that would fit in that space and be more permanent as opposed to the expansion needs that the library has demonstrated. Okay. Um, Good. Thank, thank you. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll uh, reconvene in about three or four minutes. Well, do you think we've got a hundred